Behind any economic venture, whether it be opening a primary school, implementing policies, running a rental car service or researching a phenomenon, the driving force is its ability to scale. How to scale essentially answers the question, how do I grow my idea? But it is an imprecise, often too broad a term or process that lacks standardization. The book The Voltage Effect addresses this problem and takes up the task of examining the science of scaling by clearly defining a way to identify a good idea, the one that can be scaled up, and a bad one. The author write down for us key signature traits or the five vital signs that are necessary for the vitality of any idea. These include false positive, knowing your audience, identifying the source of success, the spillover effect, and the economies of scale. Deficiency in any of these areas can render an idea unscalable. Let's explore them together. Identifying false positive. Firstly, identifying false positive is crucial in, in determining whether the idea is scalable or not. A false positive occurs when you interpret some piece of evidence or data as proof that something is true when in fact it isn't. It is the illusion of knowledge arising from either misleading data, hidden biases, or outright deception. For example, Drug Abuse Resistance Education or DARE was a program that was aimed to reduce the drug consumption in youth by preventing drugs from getting into their hands in the first place. The initial data was promising, but once the program was scaled at a larger level, it was found that the program didn't have a significant effect on preventing drug consumption. This is a classic example of false positive. One way to overcome this is by replicating the idea of three to four times and the end result would indicate the truth because a false positive will not hold up until the fourth attempt. Knowing your audience. Secondly, knowing your audience and their needs are of utmost importance. If they are not properly accounted for, whether it be a business, scientific research, education, or policy making, even the best ideas will not scale up. Sometimes assuming that the small group of people who have already bought into your idea is the true representative of the general population can lead to scaling failure. One way to avoid misrepresentation of the target audience is to first pilot test the idea. You may have experienced it that many fast food restaurants, they introduce new item and give it away free to the general public to test if we all like it and if the idea is scalable. For example, in 2008, Taco Bell introduced natural fries, which soon became the most popular item on their menu. Identifying the source of success. The third factor is identifying whether the success of the idea is dependent on the people who run the idea or the idea itself. A person's unique skill isn't something that can be mass produced, no matter how high the demand is. A great example of this is the restaurant industry, which learned this lesson in the hard way by failing to scale it large. At the beginning, they were more focused on the chef, but now they are more focused on the quality of their services. Similarly, if you have an idea, ask yourself this question. Is it the people or the systems, the methods, the processes without which your idea will fail to scale up? If your answer is the people, there is a limit to how much you can expand. However, this doesn't mean that you cannot be profitable. At least, it can help you understand or recognize the limitations of your scaling from the very beginning. The spillover effect. The fourth key characteristic is understanding that certain decisions can cause unintended spillover reactions. This is known as spillover effect. For example, when the insurance industry started giving car insurance, legal claims started increasing as more people started driving carelessly because of the protection provided by the policy. In short, safety measures have the potential to undermine their own purpose. Recognizing and dealing with spillovers at the beginning is very crucial for expansion on a larger scale. The spillovers can be characterized in three different ways. The first one is general equilibrium effect. This spillover doesn't show itself on a smaller scale, rather it emerges on a larger scale 
and leads to unintended consequences that can cause large positive or negative market-wide effects. For example, large-scale training programs can cause greater competition for high-paying jobs, which can potentially lead to lower wages for high-skilled workers. Now, do you see the cause and effect here? The second way is social side behavioral spillovers. It happens when people observe others and change their own behavior consciously or unconsciously in ways that can have positive or negative effects. For example, if an employee knows that a manager has a greater salary than him, it can cause as a motivational factor for him to work hard to be promoted. Whereas, if an employee knows that a peer has a higher salary than him, it can cause decline in his performance level. Number 3. Network Effect Spillovers It occurs when the use of some products or adoption of some policy amplifies the benefit of the user, regardless of how good or bad the product or the policy is. It may happen intentionally or organically as a result of a scaling. Take an example of social media platform. The more people are on the platform, the more benefit it provides. For example, the more people are on the LinkedIn, the more chances of networking it provides to the people. The economies of scale. Lastly, the fifth characteristic answers to the question, will your idea be costly to sustain at a scale? This is where economies of scale come in, which simply means the increase in savings as a result of the mass production of an item. Later, when you start mass production, it should automatically reduce the cost of a single unit. The reverse is true for this economies of scale, where business expands so much that the cost per unit increases. It is very important to know whether your idea is scalable or not by keeping in mind the real-world cost limitations such as human resources, required capital, and natural resources, etc. One way to tackle this is by backward induction. These fancy sounding terms simply means to come backwards in time from the best outcome of your current problem, which is to determine the overall cost of scaling. Think of your end goal and start imagining all the possible variables that you will need to get there, such as human resources, required capital, investments, and natural resources. This way you can anticipate any future or current problems and can determine whether your idea at scale is cost-friendly or not. By understanding how the scale works, it becomes easier to understand or distinguish between a good idea or a bad one. In this video, I shared simplified standard consisting of five key characteristics that can certainly promise successful expansion of scalable ideas. According to author, the only way we can bring a meaningful change in the world is if it happens at a larger scale. Therefore, it is very crucial to understand what are scalable ideas and how you can scale them at large. If you like this video, you may also like the summary of the seven habits of successful people here. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Much love and bye.